With copyright, if I you know, scribble something on a napkin, I automatically have copyright protection for it. And it's pretty easy to tell, you know, have I infringed somebody's copyright or not, because you only infringe if you actually make a copy. Um, with the patent system, there's a whole application process that can cost tens of thousands of dollars. Um, it's very difficult to tell, am I infringing somebody's patent or not? And if there's an infringement case, it can easily cost millions of dollars to litigate uh, whether or not somebody's uh, patent has been infringed. And so if you're looking uh, at a, a movement like the open source software movement or 3D printing where the whole idea is that a single individual has these very powerful tools where they can, um, they can build things from sort of from scratch or using building on top of the work of others. Um, if you have a legal system where you really need to hire a patent lawyer um, before you're allowed to really do anything, um, which is effectively if, if, if people are really trying to follow the rules that the patent system lays down, you really need a patent lawyer to understand and comply with them. Um, that really precludes uh, DIY innovation. And so what happens in practice is that people just ignore the patent system and then they get a nasty shock if their idea becomes successful. People come, you get all these patent holders come out of the woodwork and start suing them. And it really, I think, uh, becomes a disincentive to, uh, to the kind of innovation that the patent system is theoretically supposed to foster. So I, I think that for some uh, categories of innovation, um, really we'd be better off without, if we didn't uh, extend patent protection to those categories. So I think software is a good example of this. Um, the, the patentability of software is really a recent uh, phenomenon. There was some uh, sort of um, equivocal uh, Supreme Court decision, and there was one in 1981, but then the, some lower courts really decisively said you could patent software only as recently as 1998. And um, this was a very controversial decision in the, in the software industry. You had uh, people like Bill Gates and companies like Oracle expressing concerns that would really harm innovation in the software industry. Um, and I think they were basically right. And um, the, the explosion of litigation we've seen in the, in the cell phone industry, for example, um, I think is a good example of that. Um, now, in other industries, I think there are industries um, like pharmaceuticals where the patent system um, does promote innovation, and so I wouldn't want to scrap the system altogether. Um, but I think the first step is to really take a hard look at the recent uh, changes to the patent system that allowed you to patent things you couldn't patent before and maybe reverse those. Um, and I think also there, there are things you can do. It, it, it should be more difficult to get a patent, um, and it should be harder uh, if, if, you, if someone isn't, uh, a court finds someone has infringed a patent. It's right now, I think, too easy to get an injunction where you actually force the other company to stop using the patent as opposed to merely making them pay reasonable royalties for, for infringing the patent.